نیستن Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power, through every age and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Amen. We sit for our readings. <coughs> A reading from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. It is for this life only we have hoped in Christ. We are all we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? <clears throat> Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, 
Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. until uh, these decadent Finchley days uh, when I now have a bacon bussy uh, early in the morning. Um, and within my box of eggs I've got um, one that looks reasonably like an egg. Um, white eggs, don't get so many of them these days, but it's, it's actually a little children's uh, uh, egg. I've got another egg here. Um, an Easter egg, and uh, it's uh, reasonably well proportioned. I think it's uh, quite a good approximation of an egg, um, right shape, but um, uh, well, I suppose you do get some blue eggs, not, not hen's eggs, but maybe other birds might have a blue, but probably not um, a shiny foil egg. Uh, but we know that inside there's chocolate. So it looks like an egg, but it's chocolate. Um, I've also got in my egg box. Um, then we'll see what this might be. Anyone venture a guess? <coughs> yep. Is it a queer egg? It's a uh, no, it's actually just a kiwi. This is in fact a kiwi. It was a trick question. <laughs> um, uh, probably the, the healthy option for a breakfast, maybe. But Easter eggs, that's where I'd like to begin today. Um, not only can you get Easter eggs that look reasonably like Easter eggs, you get huge eggs, not like anything that, um, uh, that you'll see outside uh, Jurassic Park, I guess. But you can also get chocolate bunnies, um, uh, chocolate apples even. And this isn't just uh, an Easter thing. Uh, you'll note there's a, a variety of bakery programs these days, and you can see cakes in every shape and size, and many that uh, you would never have imagined possible. In fact, I was intrigued to discover there's actually a program called Is It Cake? Um, maybe you know it already if you've been uh, trawling through the, uh, the lower regions of your telly's menu. Um, in Is It Cake, contestants are shown five things, maybe five hats, or five trainers, or five buckets, and they have to guess which one is cake. Um, it sounds easy, but there are in fact some very skillful bakers out there where baking um, meets uh, makeup artistry, I guess. I think the cake it isn't identified in the majority of the rounds. At the very end, you have to guess whether, if you're about to win, whether it's a cake or cash. And if you make the wrong choice there, uh, you've lost everything. Delight in food that looks like something else has a very long tradition. Back to Jamalkio's feast. And probably long before that too, thousands of years. And it's not just food, there's a, a tradition of trompe l'oeil, where a surface is painted 
to look as if it's something else, uh, even a completely different <coughs> landscape. The eye can be deceived, and in these cases, it's a harmless thing, it's a fun thing. But there is a much more pernicious form of deception in today's world, that of fake news. We can see some of its effects today inside Russia, where a strategy of feeding misinformation over years enables those in power to claim anything inconvenient in the news is fake news. And this phenomenon of fake news has also affected the US, and we're not immune to it here. Fake news is hard to combat because it's dismissive of any other view. And the more you argue against it, the more entrenched and justified in its own eyes the fake news becomes. Fake news thrives on suspicion. It is divisive and gives truth a bad name. Whilst fact-checking may help us expose fake news, when even those facts are questioned unjustly, I might add, truth and any grasp on reality seems to melt away. Real news, though, stands up to scrutiny. It doesn't shy away from questions. It brings a common understanding. And this really matters in our daily lives and in the political world, of course, but especially for us as Christians. We are people of news, good news, news that brings great joy, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It's really important that this is true, not just take it or leave it, not my truth, but eternally true. St Paul sets the test. We heard in uh, his uh, reading this morning, if for this life we've hoped in Christ, we of all people are most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. Being just a nice idea or a comforting story is not good enough. There is nothing fake or untrue. And the evidence of this is in lives that have been changed. St Peter, in our reading from Acts, runs through the main events in the record of salvation and talks of the witnesses of the resurrection who ate and drank with Jesus after his resurrection. A real life experience, not something purely spiritual. Paul was a witness to the resurrected Jesus too, despite his earlier life opposing the church. And we too are called to be witnesses to the good news that Jesus is risen from the dead. This is not dismissive or divisive news, but inclusive of all, because it is news of the boundless, saving love of God that brings life to all. So how do we become witnesses? How shall we tell this good news? Well, our Gospel reading helps us, though it has an element of farce about it. First of all, Mary visits the tomb. But she doesn't look very far. She doesn't go in. She doesn't see Jesus. And she tells the disciples the wrong news that Jesus' body has been taken away. Then Peter and the other disciple run to the tomb. They do see, 
But they don't understand. Certainly Peter doesn't. And they don't tell poor Mary what they've seen. Because next, we see her still distraught in the garden. Mary now asks her questions. They might not be the right questions, assuming Jesus to be a gardener, for example. But even asking the wrong questions, she encounters Jesus and then shows the right way because she confidently declares, I have seen the Lord. So, as witnesses today, we have a pattern. It's possible for us to not look properly and have an incomplete picture. We can maybe see and not understand. We can fail to pass on our news. These were all the ways that didn't work. Or we can look and ask our questions and we will meet Jesus because we just need to seek. There isn't one hidden question we need to ask or secret fact we need to know. We just need to be open, to be asking, to meet the one who will change our lives and our world. We are all bearers of good news, my sisters and brothers, witnesses to an inclusive truth that is not afraid, that breaks down barriers. Jesus is risen. He is present, bringing life and love, which is the gift we all need. Alleluia! Christ is risen. come now to the renewal of baptismal vows. Um, the church is reasonably full today, so I don't think we'll all be able to uh, to squeeze into the south aisle. So um, uh, if any who are really close want to come a little bit closer, but otherwise I suggest you turn to face the font as we renew our vows this morning. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery, we have died and been buried with him in baptism, so that we may rise with him to a new life within the family of his church. Now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. Therefore I ask these questions. Do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. Do you repent of your sins? I repent of my sins. Do you renounce evil? And now I ask you to make the profession of uh, Christian faith into which you are baptised and in which you live and grow. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit? 
who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all those who have been baptised in your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. So let us bring to the Father our prayers of intercession through Christ who gave himself for the life of the world. In joy and hope let us pray to the Father. God our Father, on this glorious Easter day, we come together to offer praise and adoration for Jesus. Jesus risen, alive, powerful and victorious, the salvation of the world. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, without the resurrection of your Son, our faith would be empty and without hope. But he is alive and we rejoice in the knowledge that in Jesus all that separates, injures and destroys has been overcome by that which unites and heals and creates. We pray that our risen Saviour may fill us and all baptised Christians around the world with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our Father. As I say, we pray to the Father, would you please repeat? Hear our Father. We pray to the Father. Hear We pray that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter, thinking particularly of churches in Myanmar, China, Pakistan, Syria, Iraq, and Iran. We pray to the Father. Yeah. We pray that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray especially for Christians in leadership positions in Russian and Ukrainian churches, that love of one another and servant leadership 
following Jesus' washing of his disciples' feet, shall guide their thoughts and actions. <clears throat> we pray to the Father. We pray that he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. We think of trapped civilians being attacked by armies in Ukraine, Somalia and Mali, and all those who are too poor to find enough food, work or shelter. We pray to the Father. We pray that by his power, war and famine may cease throughout all the world. We pray especially that wicked aggressors in wars in Ukraine, the Middle East and in Africa face the horror and the shame of what they are doing. And we pray for ourselves in the West to show love and support for all innocent victims and to show love and acceptance to all innocent civilians in aggressive countries. We pray to the Father. Yeah. We pray that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, especially all the Ukrainians within and outside Ukraine who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. And he, we pray that he may comfort and strengthen them. We pray to the Father. Yeah. We pray that according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day, especially those who died this week in wars, fighting, street violence, and as a result of COVID. We pray to the Father. Yeah. We pray that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon all his baptised people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father. Yeah. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us to the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us stand now for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. If you feel like shaking hands, do so. If you don't, you don't, feel free not to do so, but just check with your opposite number that they're happy to do what you want. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. <laughs>
to our Eucharistic prayer. Um, so that uh, this Easter today, everyone who is a member of their own church is most welcome to receive communion with us. And the communion is offered in both kinds. Um, uh, the, the chalice will be available. Um, there will be two chalices to my left uh, during the administration of communion. And if you wish to take of the chalice, please do um, go off to my left. If you'd rather just receive uh, the bread this morning, that's absolutely fine too. That's just if you go off uh, to the pulpit side, to my right, so that we don't um, uh, create too many log jams or bump into one another. And uh, uh, just a light press, please don't dip your wafer in, in the wine. If you'd rather not drink from uh, the common cup, then I suggest you receive uh, just the bread only this morning, which is uh, a perfectly good option, and you receive the receptacle fully, even in just add the bread. Lord of all life, with unbounded joy we offer you our sacrifice of praise, as we are fed with the bread of heaven. May we know your resurrection power, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts, we give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven with resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory.
want, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <coughs> when the supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, as we remember all that Jesus did, in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with blessed Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Faithful God, in baptism you have adopted us as your children, made us members of the body of Christ, and chosen us as inheritors of your kingdom. We thank you that in this Eucharist you renew your promises within us, empower us by your Spirit to witness and to serve, and send us out as disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First of all, this morning I'd like to um, say a really big thank you to all those who've decorated our church so beautifully with uh, flowers. Thank you. It's always uh, a great treat uh, to come on Easter morning and, uh, and have flowers restored. And uh, it's um, a very distinctive smell that, that really Easter has come. So thank you to all those who've uh, uh, decorated our church. Thank you to our choir and all our musicians for all the work, um, especially through Holy Week and into Easter Day. Uh, without music, our worship wouldn't be anywhere near as good. So thank you all very much uh, to Alison, our choir, and all our organists. Looking ahead, um, over, uh, over the next week, we have our usual services at um, 11 on Wednesday and um, uh, early morning on Thursday. Uh, very importantly, next Saturday we have our next concert. That's at 6 o'clock on Saturday, our Barnett NHS Thank You concert of community gospel music and hymns. Um, and uh, we're raising funds for uh, local NHS uh, work with long COVID. And also there's an opportunity to raise funds for the Barnett Ukraine appeal. Um, there is online giving links uh, on our website at the moment. And you can come in person and hopefully watch it if you don't come in person on uh, YouTube uh, live on Saturday. So uh, if you just already put that date in your diary and there are some flyers by the door if you want to uh, remember them. Um, there are also some, uh, some uh, notice sheets by the door if you're not on our regular mailing list uh, and want to know what's coming up in the near future. And if you aren't on the mailing list but would like to be uh, please do let me know. Lastly, to say that after this service, there's uh, coffee in the hall, so do come and join us as we celebrate this great festival of resurrection. Now we come to uh, the blessing of the Easter eggs. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, above all for your Son, Jesus Christ. Bless these Easter eggs. May they be wholesome food and remind us of the resurrection of Jesus, to whom be all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. So let us stand to sing our final hymn.
Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.